My name is Maxwell. Dr. Maxwell Akot. plenty of experience in this. Since completing my studies, I've opened five maternal hospitals in Nairobi and its environs. I did this because I love my job, my country, and my people. Seven years since I began, I have to tell you this. Starting a business in Kenya sometimes can drive you crazy. I come from Konyango village in Kindube, Oma Bay County. I'm the son of Mr. Robert Sokot and Pamela Nyawade. I attended my primary school in Sangu Academy, joined high school in Maseno School, after which I went for my university education in University of Nairobi, graduating with Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery in the year 2010. At 25, I started working as an intern in a government hospital. There were a lot of issues there. Long waiting times for emergency surgery. We are having our retained placenta and the mother is bleeding excessively. Understaffing. Lack of basic medication. Do you have gynecological gloves? No, we don't have them. Lack of proper gloves. Sometimes, power went off in the middle of a surgery Ugh. and we had no choice but to improvise with our own torches. Almost, I had to make a decision to either continue like this or to try and do it better. I chose the latter. My goal was to build a hospital that defines new standards in service delivery, which is what people needed. But where to start? For some weeks I visited several places in Nairobi that I thought had issues with access to healthcare. I had different locations in mind, but finally, in the east of Nairobi, I found a place. An old empty clinic in Ruai. First, I had to figure out the cost. I had never imagined such a large budget. Wow, where would I get all this money from? No bank could have given a loan to a young 25-year-old doctor with no security. But by borrowing from my mother and girlfriend, I finally managed to get my first seed capital. Additional to that, I approached the bank and got a check of loan from my payslip. Finally, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I started a month later. It wasn't easy. I was still doing my internship in the government hospital. I had to be there during the day for my shift. Thereafter, hoping I'm a tattoo for two hours to my clinic. 
I worked for more than 18 hours every day. I was forced to leave my clinic to be run by my employees. Did I have a day off during that time? No. Hey, good night. Thank you, good night. I had to pay back 232,000 Kenya shillings per month to service my debts. But my employees kept telling me that there were rarely patients showing up when I was not at my clinic. Surprisingly, when I was at my clinic, I could always see more than enough patients. But still, we were not able to meet our monthly obligations. I contemplated giving up. When my annual leave at the public hospital came up, I dedicated my entire three weeks to work 24-7 at the clinic. And amazingly, the figures were very different. My suspicion was confirmed. My employees were playing me. That's when I said, this can't go on. First, I quit my job in the public hospital. Then, I fired my old employees and hired new ones. I was now full-time at my clinic. Our services improved. Patient numbers increased. We were able to pay back the loan. We introduced new services which were not available in the area, such as x-rays, ultrasound, and maternity. After a year, my small clinic was now operating as a full maternity hospital. This gave me the idea of replicating this model across the entire nation. I started planning to open a second hospital outside Nairobi. Financing a new project is never easy, but this time was not as hard as it was when I first started. I had good figures to show from my small clinic, and now the banks were happy to finance. Between 2016 and 2019, I was able to open a total of five new hospitals. I have remained true to my vision offering high quality services at very affordable rates, increasing access to healthcare, and helping improve maternal care with investment in high-end diagnostic equipment. New chapter, 2018. We are an established brand. The facility has grown in terms of branches with a total of five hospitals and more coming. For the first time, I am on the radar of others. The banks want their loans paid on time. Staff need to be paid on a monthly basis. Suppliers are constantly demanding payments. The problem here is you can look at As a hospital, you're very much dependent on insurances to pay back the receivables in a short time. This is not good. If they delay in payments. We would want you to pay this loan in 30 days. 30 days maximum. And the deadline for meeting the monthly obligations reaches, then the hospital is broke. The problems became even more serious when one of the major insurances changed its payment methods. In the beginning, the insurer was always my lifeline. It repaid the cost that I had incurred in about three weeks. But suddenly, payment modalities changed. Why? Because it was speculated that state officials were misappropriating the funds. That almost brought me to the brink of ruin. Delays and payments can paralyze any business. It gets to a point when you can't pay your own staff, let alone buying medication. Another challenge for entrepreneurs in Kenya is cost of doing business. For example, you need a minimum of 11 licenses from different government authorities to run a healthcare facility. This doesn't come cheap and takes time. The biggest challenge that I face is dealing with corrupt government officials. They will try to get money off you even when you have all the required licenses. If you don't buy them a cup of tea, quote unquote, they threaten to close down your business. An example of these frustrations happened before I built my largest hospital, 
which has a capacity of 100 beds. The county government had promised to build a connecting road from the main road to the clinic. But one year after opening the hospital, nothing had been done. It was impossible for the patients on stretchers and wheelchairs to access the hospital, let alone the ambulances. I was forced to buy the plot next to the road in order to construct the road for easy access, an expense I had not budgeted for. And last but not least, there's a competition. If the services provided by the hospital are of high standards. What goes around and you get more patients coming from the other facilities. This does not go well with the operators of other facilities. It gets worse if your competitor is moneyed. Then they are able to buy media as well. And if your hospital is on prime news for several days, then that is a good indication that someone wants you out of business. What follows is what we call a dirty game. They will try everything to damage your reputation. They will go to the extent of paying people to demonstrate against your facility. There's nothing we have not done. We have compiled. We have complied by all means and all standards that are required. Thank you very much. Excuse me, Dr. Okot, there's an emergency in room number five. Eight years after starting my first hospital, was it easy? No. Is it still worth continuing? Yes. Kenya needs more affordable healthcare facilities. I will not stop in my quest to fill this gap.